Mary Iverson. I do not, will not pretend to be her, but um, there has been a complication, and Sandy Hartman has a few more details of uh, um, Mary Iverson's situation right now. So I'd like uh, Sandy to come up, because she's actually talked to Mary in the more recent hours than I have. So. Good morning, everyone. Um, Pastor Mary texted me this morning. She and I have been texting back and forth a little bit. She went to the emergency room in Albert Lee yesterday afternoon, and they sent her on to Rochester by ambulance. She has an abscess in her abdomen, which is basically caused from the perforation colon issue that she has that we're all very aware of. She's doing very well. Uh, she wants you to know that. She will be having surgery today to put in a drainage for the abscess. And the doctor said that she's looking really good and she feels well. Of course, she wants to get right back to work, but she needs to take care of herself first before she can do that. She also wanted me to let you know that don't worry, there will be some pastors who will fill in for her in the meantime until she's able to get back and service, you know, lead our worship for us and do her other duties. So in the meantime, you know that you have a very good experienced group of assisting worship leaders that we've had for the past several years. So we'll be able to take care of our worship services in the meantime while we all pray for Mary to get better very soon. Thank you. I've also been asked to announce that uh, Lois Grosskreit passed away yesterday. The funeral arrangements are still pending and uh, the funeral for Kathy Goldman will be here tomorrow. Lori will um, lead that service. Um, and just one personal thought, when you tell somebody when they're in times of trouble and you say, give me a call, call I'll help you with anything, be careful who you say that to, because I said that to Pastor Mary two weeks ago and here I am. <laughs> Please stand and join in the gathering song, Now the Green Blade Rises, ELW 379. Confident in God's extravagant love, we confess our sins before God and one another.
Let us pray. Have God of mercy and kindness. Our God hears our prayers and responds with acceptance and love. Today, may you receive the entire fondness of all your sins, entire forgiveness of all your sins, and know that you are enough, just as you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And you may be seated. We will not have a children's sermon today as Mary entirely had it in her head and I was not able to mental telepathy get it. Uh, today's choir anthem is Let the Trumpet Sound. We will read Psalm 16 responsively. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a good heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. 
Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the di disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, you are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may live it, his name forever. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Today's sermon is in Mary's writing, so it is, it is geared to her personality. Grace and mercy and the peace of the God of the Father from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I have two children. Sam turns 20 in a few weeks, and Rachel is 17. I have basically survived parenting two teenagers. The most entertaining stage was when my kids would get embarrassed by everything their mom did or said. You know that stage. I remember the first time I was giving my son and his friends a ride, and he said, please don't do anything to embarrass me. So what can I say or do? Basically nothing. Do nothing and say nothing, please. They liked it when I gave them money or gave them rides or made their favorite meals, but they lost appreciation for my mad sing along to the radio on the car ride skills or my ability to tell funny jokes to their friends. Did you know that there is even a website called How to Embarrass Your Children in Front of Their Friends? I could have written half the things on that website. I accepted the fact that I was an embarrassment to my children. Bible scholars have decided that Thomas is probably an embarrassment to the early Christian community. Thomas is usually given the nickname, the Doubting Thomas. Matthew, Mark, and Luke don't say anything about Thomas. Many think, think that they said nothing because they wanted to keep it hush-hush, like a bad secret. Thomas was an embarrassment, but John the Gospel writer deals with it directly. First, John wrote about this conversation. Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to leave you and prepare a place for you. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. Don't let your hearts be upset. And while Jesus was sharing this wonderful promise, Thomas interrupted and said, um, Jesus, I don't have the slightest idea where you're going to go. How can we know the way? Can you believe that he interrupted and questioned Jesus that way? John might have been shocked 
but he included this story. And then John also included today's Bible story, which takes place a week after the Easter resurrection. The other disciples say, Thomas, we have seen Jesus in his resurrected body. Thomas says, yeah, right. I'll believe that only when I see the nail holes in his wrists and thrust my fist into the spear wound on his side. Thomas isn't the only embarrassment in the Christian family. There are others who question the ways of God. Read the Old Testament wisdom book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastics, excuse me. It is filled with hard questions and doubts of the author. The book of Ecclesiastics is actually the story of a skeptic, one who believes in God but has hosts of tough questions for God, the same kind of questions that Thomas had. There is another doubter in the Bible named Gideon. He said, if the Lord is with us, why has all this tragedy come our way? And the Psalms are filled with lament and doubt. One palmist wrote, all I do is cry. My tears have been my food both day and night. All while the people bully me and ask, where is your God? Joining the doubters of the Bible, and I could have listed many more, are the church leaders who were doubters. Scotland's fiery reformist John Knox said, my soul has been called God's promises into doubt. Martin Luther, Luther struggled with his faith saying, for a period of time, Christ was completely lost to me. I was shaken with despair against God. Luther had such moments of doubts that he felt like everything in his life was being attacked. His Christian faith, his confidence as a reformer, and the very forgiveness of sins. Everything broke down so much that he said he had very little faith in God at one point. But luckily, that was not the last word for Luther. The last word for Martin Luther was the first commandment. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Martin repeated it dozens of times and reminded him that there is a God with unconditional love even was he, when he was in a pit of meaninglessness. He said it saved him. Thomas, Ecclesiastics, Gideon, the Palmist, John Knox, Martin Luther, they teach us that doubts come and go. And they remind us that doubts need not be a bad word in our Christian vocabulary because doubt is not the opposite of faith. Rejection is the opposite of faith. In fact, I'm going to su suggest that there is an advantage to having some doubts. Doubting means we are searching and questioning, and then God can reach us more easily. One author, Frederick Bosher, said, if you don't have any doubts, you are either kidding, kidding yourself or you are asleep. Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep us awake and moving. One of my pastoral and preaching mentors is a woman named Barbara Brown Taylor. She was named by Time Magazine as one of the 10 top preachers of this generation. I have traveled to Nashville and Atlanta and just to hear her preach and teach with about preaching. I put her to a preaching pedestal, you could say, and then after only 20 years in the ministry, she quit. She resigned as pastor. It was a surprise to many. And then she wrote a book about her resignation called Leaving the Church. She had many re reasons for resigning. As she wrote, I read everything other Christians told me I should read, but I didn't arrive at the same, the same confidence that they seemed to possess. When it came to faith, I possessed curiosity, awe, and hope. I had doubt and fear, but nothing like the certainty about which I believed. By the time I resign resigned as pastor of Calvary Episcopal, Episcopal Church, <clears throat> I had arrived at an understanding of faith that far, had far more to do with trust than with certainty. I trusted God to be God, even if I could not say who God was for sure. I trusted God to sustain the world, even though I couldn't say for sure how it happened. I trusted God to hold me and those I loved in life and in death without giving me one shred of conclusive evidence that it was so. This understanding changed my faith from a noun to a verb for me. I learned to prize holy ignorances more highly than holy certainty. So perhaps it isn't terribly embarrassing to have some doubts. 
I'm not talking about willful disobedience, but honest doubts. Willful disobedience is creating excuses not to believe, excuses for breaking every commandment, or excuses for living life opposed to the promises of Jesus. Honest doubts are something else. Honest doubts is having questions, but figuring out that we have enough questions to keep on going. Honest doubts is knowing that there is light in the darkness, even though some darkness still remains. Honest doubts is asking why your loved ones had to suffer or die, but still trusting all the while that they are safe in the arms of our Savior. Honest doubts are seeing God in the mirror dimly, trusting that one day we will see God face to face. Honest doubts mean we keep praying and seeking and asking and wondering. Honest doubts are given as much to ourselves as we can, as much of, of Christ as we can possibly understand right now. Many of us stand in the long line of Christian doubters, a line that begins back when the Bible was written, as we hold our doubts and our faith, saying, I believe, dear Jesus, please help me believe all the more. As we ask the questions and wonder about all these truths, Remember that Jesus came back to visit Thomas to bring him assurance. Jesus will visit us as we continue asking. And the great promise that is ours, though it is God, it, it that God doesn't give us up on us. In the midst of doubts, we are always and only named as a holy and beloved child of God. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, you know our faith is not always rock solid, but in your amazing love, we give you thanks for not turning away from us. When we struggle to believe, we trust that we are still counted as a beloved child of God. When our faith is weak, O oh God, stun us with your, with your faithfulness, moving us to strengthen our beliefs and leading us forward to a time when our faith will be steady and strong. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The song of the day is thine, in the, thine is the Glory in the ELW 376.
sing and join me in the Apostles' Creed. You will find it on page 105 in the ELW. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a moment to share a peace with your neighbors. Oh, you are? What are you doing? <laughs> Do you hear the music? At Good Shepherd, we are blessed with a wonderful music ministry. We have great musicians on staff and wonderful volunteers who share of their time. For what, and for that, we are certainly blessed. Your generous gifts, along with the donation of time and skills, makes the music happen as we sing praises to God together. We thank you for your generous offerings today and always. We will now receive our morning offering.
The offertory response is praise and thanksgiving, number 689 in the ELW. or be seated for the prayers of the church. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the living word of God that has nurtured our faith. We give you thanks that you meet us where we are in life. You walk with us through all the journeys of this life, gifting us with hope and strength and understanding. Give us all the strength to trust in you, even when we are filled with honest doubt. Help us, God, to trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, your love is stronger than death, and your love is more powerful than the grave. May the hope of the resurrection comfort those who grieve this day. We pray for the family of Kathy Goldwyn, who grieve her death. We also pray for the family of Lois Grosskreis. May the promise of the resurrection gift us with comfort and strength to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you give us the grace that helps us in times of need. Surround all of those in need. We pray with your steadfast love. As we go through struggles in life, help us to realize that you are with us at all times and in all things. We pray this day for Lester Salisbury, who has been released from the hospital and is now at Parkview. We continue to pray for Marlene and Tom, Lois and Ray, Bill and Jan and Shannon. May they be filled with the strength and comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise for the Lord's Prayer.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please join in the sending song, Christ Has Risen, Alleluia, verses 1 and 2 in your ELW 364. No, no, you did nothing wrong. You did a great job. Thank you, Trudy. This is our new hymn of the season. It's an Easter hymn which is somewhat unfamiliar to us, so we thought this was a good one to learn. Not that there's anything wrong with the other ones, but new is good sometimes as well. So the choir will sing through it one time. Please follow along, and then we'll sing uh, verses 1 and 2.